Hey guys, it's Andre from the High Performance Academy and we're here with Alex from AMP Racing and we're looking at this little Pro-Am Daihatsu Charade which is one of the most unique cars I think I've seen here. Alex, can you give us a little bit of a rundown on, on what's been done to this car because it's pretty clear it's at least got an engine swap going on there. Yeah, it's got a major engine swap. Uh, we found that continuously running with the Daihatsu engine we ran into transmission problems. Uh, dog boxes uh, did not work. So I tried to find the combination that from factory was strong and on top of that I went with an aftermarket gear set just to be safe. Now it's running a Honda B series motor, it's uh, still a 1.8 litre, it's been sleeved with Darden sleeves by uh, Bakers uh, in Orange who do a lot of top fuel drag cars. On top of that it's running an ERL 5 point main girdle to tie the bottom end together. Manly turbo tough 1000 horsepower rods, Wiseco pistons, compression of 10 to 1, standard B16 cams and a full valve train kit with a CNC ported head. Um, last time on the dyno, 24 pounds, E85, it laid down just on 500 horsepower at the wheels, so it's got a fair amount of grunt. That's a, that's a serious B-series build. That's um, definitely a lot of grunt for a front-wheel drive car. Now, you say that you went to the Honda setup because you were having gearbox issues, so you're still running a, a basic a Honda gearbox with, you said, a dog, dog change gear set inside it? It's, it? it's actually running a straight-cut synchro set. Because the car, at the time, may have been a street car, um, paths changed, and I didn't go to a dog box. Um, it's been fine. It goes through synchros. We're going to try a different brand of synchro to see if we uh, alleviate the problem. We keep on damaging fifth gear. We probably get four track days on fifth gear before we need a new sleeve and a new synchro. So apart from that, gear-wise, is fine. Now, how have you found axle reliability with that much power going through uh, two front wheels? Okay, axle reliability. From the outset, I had the uh, hubs re-spline to accept a TRD racing outer CV joint. On the inners, I'm running a larger than standard Honda joint that's been modified with a custom uh, billet drive shaft. Okay, let's move on to engine management. So what are you using to control this, uh, this 500 horsepower B-Series engine? All right, as you can see, uh, the way I built this engine, I don't muck around. Now, I use Motec. Motec is the best. Uh, I run an ADL, an M800, uh, PDM30 and a Motec CDI system. I've never had any problems. You find a good tuner that you can rely on, you'll be fine. Data wise, I try to log as much data as possible. All the engine sensors. Um, next season we're going to go to shock position sensors and steering input. Uh, I think that's going to be a great tuning tool now that the car is starting to use a lot more aero than what it did before. We have to see what the suspension is doing to further develop uh, the car. So you're running in the Pro-Am class with this, with this car. Um, I see it does have some aero on it. What are the limitations with the Pro-Am class and, and, and what sort of rules do you have to be careful to work around? All right, now from my understanding, Pro-Am class is uh, it's pretty open. We run the same rules as the Pro cars, uh, apart from the driver. The driver can't be a professionally paid driver as a living. Um, now, body-wise, I know that we can go 300 mil from the furthest standard body part forward and rearwards. So 300 mil past your bumper bar, your, far, your front splitter can go, and your rear diffuser can go another 300 mil past the rear bumper bar. So th these are all your limitations on what you can do with the aero package on the correct. cart. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, our wings, unlike I think open class, have to be level with the roof line. We can be above the roof line and we can have canards that extend the next to 300 mil from the widest point of the car. Okay, so what, what are you doing with the driver to help develop the car and, and make it faster? When, when he comes in from a track session, what changes are you making to the car to, to help improve that and, and drop your lap times? All right. First of all, tyre pressures. First of all, driver input, what he has to tell me plays a main part. On top of that, what he tells me I correlate with tyre pressures, tyre temperatures. I have my data analysis guy that goes through the data every time the car comes in. He goes through everything, then he speaks to the driver and then relays information to me and we try and make changes. One of the more unique things that I've seen with the car is uh, the radiator or the position of the radiator. Tell us about that because it's not where you'd expect to find it. 
Yeah, unfortunately being a, a Honda B-Series engine in a little Daihatsu charade, I'm a bit stuffed when it comes to space. The only place I could really put the radiator was in the boot. You'll find that the uh, cooling system is way over-engineered because I wanted it to work off the bat. Uh, it works very well, well to the point where without a thermostat it wouldn't get over 50 degrees and it would stay on the cold start map. I had to put a thermostat in the car to get it to work properly and I had to remove uh, some air scoops that I had made to catch more air to cool, you know, pass through the radiator. So it works fine. That's, um, that's a pretty impressive result. Obviously you say you put it in the boot because of the fact you just didn't have any room up the front of the car. I'm assuming the, there must be some uh, weight distribution advantage with having that back there as well. Would that be fair? Yeah, you could say that. The, the cooling system does carry about 15 litres of, uh, of fluid. Now, the last time I had it weighed on the scales, it weighed in about 10.30 with driver. And over the front wheels, I think we were seeing about 500 and, uh, 580 kilos and the remainder was over the rear. So there is a close 50-50 split. Not quite, but close. That's pretty impressive for, uh, for uh, what is a standard road car being modified. Okay, so front wheel drive, four wheel drive, rear wheel drive. Uh, seems like front wheel drive is probably the, the hardest package to get to go around a racetrack, particularly when you've got so much power. Is, is, it, is it a bit of a challenge? For me personally, no, because I don't drive the car. But uh, I, I can confirm that my driver does have problems getting around the track very fast. <laughs> because with a front wheel drive, you have to drive on the limit to be fast. The rear has to steer for a car to go around the track fast. So. Okay Alex, look, thanks for taking the time to chat to us. It's an impressive car, it, it certainly looks the part and uh, it's, it's different which we, we really like. Uh, we'll take the time now I think to have a chat to Steve, your uh, data analysis guy, and just get his impression on what he's looking for when the car comes into the pits and he gets that data out of the ADL dash. Thanks a lot. Thanks guys. We've got Steve here who's in charge of the data analysis on this little charade and Steve, first of all I think we'd like to know what, what sensors has the car got? What, what are you actually data logging? It's reasonably basic at the moment. Um, we log all the standard engine parameters, um, fuel, water temp, coolant temp. We've got coolant temp sensors at either end of the car because the, the radiator is remounted. Um, we look after log brake pressure front and rear so that they, we can adjust bias on the fly throughout the car. Um, that's pretty much it really other than the, the standard sensors throughout the engine. And so what are you actually feeding those sensors into? What, what ECU is the car running? The car runs a Motec M800. The sensors are fed into the dash so the driver's got real time display um, of any of the engine parameters, all of the alerts and that sort of stuff in there. It's also got a PDM30 to control all the power. The, we log all the channels from the PDM so we can keep an eye on anything that's going wrong as far as you know if we're blowing fuses, if fuel pumps are drawing too much current, anything like that. This has got to be the only charade anywhere in the world running a Motec PDM power distribution module, surely? I'd imagine probably. I mean, you might have something in a rally car somewhere using a PDM, but they're also new to the market. Um, I think most cars are going to end up going this way now. It's just so much easier than bothering with a bunch of relays and fuses and that sort of thing. So, yeah. Okay, so you mentioned that all of that data is being fed into the Motec dash. Which model Motec dash is it running? It's, it's an old school ADL1. Um, it's, the logging is actually done by the ECU at the moment because the dash isn't enabled for logging um, but we get information from the CAN bus from both the PDM and the dash into the ECU for logging. Um, we do a couple of calculations in the dash, gear speed, brake bias, that sort of thing to ensure that we've got the data available um, but yeah it's most of the logging is actually in the ECU at the moment. Are you using the ADL dash for anything like uh, track timing? Um, yeah, we, well, we've got the Motec GPS system in it at the moment, so it displays lap times, sector timing, and we recalculate in the i2 software as far as for after analysis for sector times. So when the car comes in from a hot lap, what sort of data are you looking for when you download the, the data out of the ECU? Straight away we're looking for any problems, we're looking for any misses, get any driver feedback where it might be missing around the track and see what could be causing it from the Lambda, from any ignition problems, anything like that. Um, then we go through and with the driver and actually see, compare him to better laps to see whether or not he's improving in places, getting worse, what his brakes are like, where, like his brake points, that sort of thing. Check top speeds, check temperatures, all that sort of thing. Just make sure everything's alright with the car. So you say that you're logging Lambda into the ECU as well. 
Obviously, uh, it's making a lot of power. It's a fairly highly strung motor, despite yep. it's, it's obviously a strongly built engine. Yep. Are you making changes to the engine tune based on that data logging after a session as well? Not at the moment. Um, everything's pretty much spot on with the car. It's tuned reasonably safely. So we don't really make changes between sessions. Um, at the moment, too, we're also getting our heads around the car and making sure. So we don't want to change too much. It's just working from a baseline at the moment. Alex said the uh, data analysis package for next season might step up a notch. As a, an analysis engineer, what sort of data would you really love to see from the car? What's going to make your job easier? Um, be good to have suspension sensors throughout the car so we can see exactly how things are going. But mostly we need to use a lot more of what we've got at the moment too. Um, we want It's got an electronic throttle body so it would be good to get up traction control working and that sort of thing because just the characteristics of the motor has very light switch power delivery. So making life easier for the driver out of corners and stuff would be good. Um, yeah, so that sort of stuff is what we'll be looking at for next season. So in the class you're running and traction control is totally open, you've, you've got no problems with that? I will probably should check that but I'm reasonably certain traction control is fine. Okay, Steve, look, that's, um, that's great. Thank you for taking the time to have a chat to us. The car's great. We can't wait to see it go around the track, and uh, hopefully you guys can go a little bit quicker in the next couple of sessions. Thanks for talking to us. Great, thank you. For online tuning courses, visit learntotune.com.